All right, all right. We're going to get right into it. Melinda in the building. How are you today, Mel Melinda, little lady? I am doing great. Thank you for asking. How about yourself? I am doing all right. On my way to... I Well, I'm in Iowa, but I'm on my way to Nebraska for a 1 a.m. appointment. That's trucking Ooh, for cool. you, ain't it? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. What? I got lucky. I made it to my stop early, but they're not going to take me till 7 a.m., so I get to sleep in, so. That's what's up. What What is... What is the craziest appointment times that you that that you had in your trucking career? Um, I really haven't had any. I don't consider anything really crazy. Uh, first part of my trucking career, I was on a regional dedicated account, mm -hmm. and I just came over to over the road uh, about four weeks ago. Uh, to spread my wings and learn a little bit more about trucking because I'm considering about becoming an owner op. Okay, that's what's up. All right, so introduce yourself to everybody and let them know what you did before trucking. Uh, I did over 25 years in the medical field. Uh, I was a combat medic in the Army, and then I worked in medical clinics, and I also taught uh, at a vocational school. Okay, okay. So is that 25 years in the medical field, including the Army? Or was that you was yes. in the Army? Was, okay, so that includes the Army. Yes, it does. So, so, you was a, so you was a medic in the Army for 20 years? No, I did 10 years in the Army as mm -hmm. a combat medic, and then I did 10 years, uh, about 15 years as a civilian. Okay, so Army life, 10 years. You you only had 10 more years to go. What what, what happened about finishing? I got med boarded uh, due to medical conditions. You... I could not fulfill the rest of my time, yeah. Aww. Well, do I know it sucks. <laughs> yes, it did. Yes, it did. Cause I went in, you know, with the mentality of doing the full 20. So mm -hmm. it, it took a little while to accept it. So, so for the 10 years, what, what was, what was life like in the army for the 10 years? And my other question is being that you was a medic, did you actually uh, see some, like some, action like you know like some some combat uh guys coming back from combat like getting like extremely hurt or anything like that um uh, yes i um well being in the army as a medic i was in a support battalion which means we had several different uh battalions that were in that we supported medically Mm -hmm. So anytime any of them were out in the field for training, we had to be out there with them to provide medical coverage in case they got injured or hurt while training. Oh, okay. Um, and then when um, I did go on two tours to Iraq, the first one was 15 months. The second one was 12 months. And, um, yeah, th there was definitely some um, combat trauma that came through. Wow. Wow. Um what was some what was some of the trauma if 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 you don't mind talking about it, what what was some of the trauma that came that came through? Um gunshot wounds, um e uh birdside bombs, explosions, um we had some local nationals that came through with um injuries also, so it wasn't just uh, armed forces that we treated. We also treated local nationals. Um, how, how, seeing, seeing, how did that affect you guys? Um, well, I can't say guys as in general. I can only speak for myself. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, 
it was very complex, uh, especially as a medic, because if you'll be sitting there and there's nothing going on, you're like, oh, I'm bored. But then you feel bad because you say you're bored because you ain't got no work to do. Mm-hmm. So that means somebody's got to be sick or injured to have work to do. So there's that conflict in there. And then, you know, um, when somebody comes in, you have to go on your training and remove the emotional part out of it so you can do your best for your patient. Gotcha. Did any did anybody do any uh any any Quincy situations? And what I mean by Quincy, um the old uh television show, the doctor television show Quincy, in the intro, he was doing um he was working on a patient and one of the guys fainted. Did did anybody in uh you know in the situation was was in that situation that that couldn't handle it and they they passed out? <laughs> well, um, as part of when we're deployed and stuff, we would uh, also go over to the Iraqi Army side mm-hmm. of the camp mm-hmm. and teach them combat life saving skills. Mm-hmm. And um, part of the combat life saving skills is teaching them how to do IVs. And uh, while they were learning IVs and stuff, one guy was practice sticking me with an IV, and he passed out while he was sticking me. <laughs> and so as as I'm trying to take control of the needle that's half in, half out of my arm, and he's falling on the floor, somebody else is taking care of him, and then you hear this thong, 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 and three <laughs> more people passed out that was watching. Wow. So, yes, it does happen. So going into the army, um, wh- how old was you when you when you went into the army? I went into the army late. I went in at the age of twenty nine. I wanted to wait till all my kids were in school. Wow! Before I went into the army, yeah. The, the army took you in at twenty nine. Yes, they did. You know, it's funny. That I that I talked to, you know, I you know, I have a lot of conversations with a lot of people. Um, and that's what I enjoy doing. I, I love getting to knowing, you know, getting to know you guys. But I I, I talked to the uh one well, he was a gentleman. I talked to the one gentleman and he was he was at, at 29 and he was thinking about going to the service, but he said when he went in, he got turned down because he was too old. So, wow. So Maybe it depends on what branch. That might have a factor in it. Oh, okay. I know each branch is different. Okay. So you waited till your kids got older and everything. What was that conversation? <laughs> what was that conversation like with the kids when you say, you know what? I want to join the Army. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to well, join the Army. <laughs> well, I wanted to be in the military. Um, I was actually a teenage mom. Mm-hmm. So I, when I had my first one, I was actually just graduating high school. And I wanted to wait until he was, you know, five or six. Because I was always brought up the first five years. It's like the most right. critical. Right. And the most impressionable, too. Exactly. So I was like, well, I'll just wait until, you know, he starts uh, school and then I'll go ahead and then go into the military like I wanted to, of course, then Mm -hmm. two more followed along. So it ended up being um, when I was 29 was when finally when my youngest one started school. So. But they they always knew. I mean, it, it wasn't like a, a spur of the moment. I've always talked about it because it was just something that I wanted to do. So I, so be, before I I jump to the conclusions, are are, are you married or are you or the all your kids you know all your kids father the same? Because I'm sure you had to have that conversation with him as well. Yes, um, the kids father is the same i am married but i'm on my second marriage now um but they all have the same daddy and um he was all for it uh 
So it, it was it was good. He he stayed home with the kids and took care of them while I went to boot camp and everything. How was boot camp for a woman? I had a blast. It was just a big game. So they so what I see on television, uh what I see on television is different in reality. I mean, do they really come in at at four o'clock in the morning and hit you with that baton horn to get you guys up to to do uh eighteen mile heights? Yes and no. Not every day is like that, but there are several days that are like that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That was uh when when you went in at at, at the age of twenty nine, did did you get any did you get any backlash from from the other from the other cadets that went in with you? Like, did did the drill sergeant concentrated on you the most because you was the oldest? No, actually they didn't. They, they kind of like let me stay in the, the background because I was, um, I don't know, I guess because I, I like had the mother tendency and I like mothered everybody. And I, so, and then I was like, like, we're not allowed to have um, what we call fatty cakes, mm -hmm. which is like the cupcakes, the pies and all that stuff. Right. But they would have them there. And um, so I got everybody together. So we because if somebody ate one, then they got to watch everybody get punished oh. who didn't eat. The one that did eat it got to watch while everybody else got punished. So, wait. So I got everybody together. <laughs> wait. They, they, they try to set you up for failure so that you won't fail. Is, is that what I'm hearing? Yes, exactly. Wow. And you, you was the one that knew that right off the rip. Like, yo, y'all, hey, hey, y'all, come here. Come here. Let me, come here. Let me talk to you. Let me, let me, let me talk to you. <laughs> let me talk to you. What, what, what do you, right, what, right. what you say to him? What, what, what you say to him? I was like, okay, listen, y'all just quit being selfish and eating a fatty cake on your own. Let's just make one day and we just all eat one. And that way we just all watch nobody get punished. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So ten years as a medic, uh, you yes. was and and uh, you you was lightweight, kind of forced out. But being but being let go from the military, are you still? Well, of course you have the the veteran benefits. Uh, I'm I'm sure if you get hurt or sick or anything like that, you can always go to the VA hospital. But Correct. Do you do you still get monetary value? I mean, do you still get monetary from from uh from the army? Yes, I am a disabled veteran that is combat related. Oh, okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so you stepped out of the stepped out of the boots, became a became a civilian, and what was the next thing that you did now? You you did what now? What was next on the horizon? Um. Well, I I taught medical assisting, a uh, phlebotomy, EKG, um, mm -hmm. at a vocational school, and I also worked at a medical clinic. Okay, okay. Now, now, Melanie, I'm I'm here. I can understand the army part. I I, I get the army part, but we we in the medical field, and I'm hearing. A trend here. A lot of a lot of you young ladies are coming out of the medical field to get into trucking. But I'm scratching my head here like y'all in the medical field. Where the hell the interest in trucking comes into play? <laughs> I frequently call myself an accidental trucker. I did not get my class A to become a truck driver. Okay, talk to me. Why and why did you get your class A for what? Well, my husband and I have a um, triple axle toy hauler fifth wheel, mm -hmm. and we go RVing quite frequently. Okay, okay. And I asked him to teach me how to drive it, and he told me no. 
Oh. He said that if he had to teach me how to drive the RV, we would either get a divorce or kill each other, and he liked me too much for either of those options. Okay. Okay. So the only... Yep. So, so I was... Oh, go ahead. Well, it was about a week after we had that conversation. I drove by a truck driving school, and I'm like, oh, they can teach me. <laughs> so I... <laughs> so you're just out driving. You, you're just out chilling, cruising. You just happen to look out the window and say, uh, okay, let me pull up in there. You, you That's not like something that I did. <laughs> this drove yes, past yes, I, this this drove past uh try C. I was like, huh. It's time. Let me just walk up in there. What was what 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 was it? How was it like when you walked up in there? What 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 did you say to them? I just told them that um I was interested in enrolling not to become a truck driver but to uh, learn how to drive our RV because my husband wouldn't teach me how to drive it. And since I was working at a medical clinic at that time, I wanted to know if they had evening and weekend classes because I could not come all day. And they pro they they did right because majority w w did you yep. went to a technical college or was it a truck driving school? It was a truck driving school. Oh, okay. Then yeah, they 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 have to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. they did have a, a program with that. All right, so yo, so, so yo I walked out and rolled. Oh, that it's so you cash cat cash and carry, or they gave you a grant. I, I use my uh, GI benefit. Oh, see, I don't have. I, see, I don't have that bill. But anyway, ding ding, that's what's up. Now you, now your phone number, if I'm not mistaken, is listing you out of Texas. That's that's where you from. Yes. Born and raised. Born and raised. Yes, I am. Please tell me it's Houston so I can play the Houston drop when I when I edit this. <laughs> Okay, okay. So I was born in Irving, but I grew up in Houston. Yep. And when my parents divorced, I did the school year in Houston, and I did the school vacations in Dallas. Oh, okay, that's what's up. See, I can do my I can do my Houston drop when I edit this video. That's what's up. All right, so mm -hmm. all right, so down in Houston, Texas, you got your license down there. You got your CDLs down there. Um, so you got your CDL, you got your class A, and all you wanted mm -hmm. to do was just drive, you know, just drive your RV. What, what happened? What, what happened of you getting into the truck? I had, well, I had my license for over a year mm -hmm. and, um, there was a lot of changes that happened at the clinic that I worked at, and I just reached full burnout. And I looked at my husband, and I'm like, you know, I'm so tired of medical. I said, can I just drive for a couple of years and see what it's like? And um, he's like, yeah, but I want you to get something that you stay pretty close you know, no more than a day's drive away. That way, if there's any emergencies or anything, I can come get you. Okay. And that's how I ended up being on the regional dedicated account. And I did that for two and a half years. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. You you, you and your husband got a pretty good relationship that you guys could actually talk back. And, I mean, have a casual conversation of him understanding and understanding of what you're getting into trucking for, right? Yes, absolutely. Awesome, awesome. How long have you been a truck driver? I in to what month is this? November. So mm -hmm. in March will be three years. Three years. So you say you. So the first. So the first company you got with, are is the first company you got with is the company that you have currently. No, when I switched to over the road, I switched companies. Oh, okay, okay. So the first company that you got with was uh was regional. What was what was the name of that company? If you want to put it out there, uh, that was Snyder National. 
Oh, okay. Then that's you, you also went through the training process with Snyder as well? Uh, I did a three-week inexperience orientation. Oh, okay, okay. So your time so your time with Snyder when you got there, uh what what division did you did you drive? Because Snyder got a lot of divisions. Correct. I was on the uh Costco dedicated account for the regional run. All right, all right. So I did Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Louisiana. And then while I was on the account, uh, they threw in Arkansas. Okay. And this is home every weekend? Yes. All right. All right. So you, you, you will Snyder, uh, any, any, any incidents or issues with Snyder that you had with him or was your, or was your run with Snyder pretty good? Uh, it was amazing. Um, I actually stayed with the account longer than what I planned to just because I had such a good rapport with, um, my whole team. And, um, I was a mentor for the account, so anytime experienced drivers came in on the account, they would drive with me, and I would show them how the accounts run and everything. And, um, I mean, in two and a half years, I got over probably about 311,000 miles oh, okay. in two and a half years on that account, and um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was, but I knew I was getting stagnant, and I needed to grow as a driver. Mm -hmm. And I knew I couldn't do it staying on that account. Exactly. So when you decided to uh, switch uh, switch over, uh, you what what you do? Went with another mega carrier, or you went with somebody smaller? Um, I went with a company called Variant. Um, they fall under U.S. Express, oh. but it, it's the oh. own company oh okay okay so they, they run a little they run differently than u.s express does oh. but they fall under u.s express dot unpopular opinion coming your way oh <laughs> sorry that means i uh, can catch your back it's okay i'm a I, I used to drive for U.S. Express. I, I started my career with U.S. Express uh, two years after I, uh, after I got my license. Uh, young lady came in, poured the milk. I drunk it, came on to U.S. Express, did about two years, got kicked out over some BS. You guys could see it on the video. All you have to do is pull it up. I'll link it in the description below. But uh, but yeah, I yeah, not nah, uh, you know after I left U.S. Express, of course, um, not a fan of how we left things, but not a fan of how things was running while I was there. So years down the line, here comes a company that's that's quote unquote for the drivers that. It's like a sister company to U.S. Express, but it's its own entity. Here's here's mm -hmm. the here's the here's the thing. You got Variant use U.S. Express's DLT. Variant use U.S. Express's uh, shops for the trust breakdown, of course. Mm -hmm. You got a mm -hmm. you 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 guys uh it, 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 the payroll even though it says variant goes through US Express US Express yes so if with all that said how is variant its own entity if it still use a lot of the US Express uh construct It, from what they explain, explained it to me was that it's like a, um, it's in the same family, but it's a little sister. So even though the little sister shares the same DNA in a lot of facets, it's still its own person. Okay, that's what's up. All right, so you decided to go, what, what, what brought you, what 
what what what brought you towards variant uh was was it was uh was it like a facebook post or another driver or you or you just 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 i was researching different companies and there was just a couple of things that i really liked um about what they put out so i did more research into it and that's why i ended up being with them all right that's what's up that's what's up that has driven with variant and drive for them as well what has variant done for you per se like what there even though i know you're going to you know going to give a lot of pros but there got to be some cons with variant as well not all companies oh, is, yeah, I mean. you know it's perfect <laughs> oh absolutely um there is definitely been some hiccups and it has not been all smooth selling but the facet or the experience that I personally have had with them is that there has not been any blame game. It's not, oh, the customer this or the customer that, or, you know, our hands are tied. There's nothing we can do. It's more like, oh, yep, customer canceled. Let's go ahead and get you another load. Let's get you on the road. You know, it, it, they don't play the BS game. It's just like, oh, yep, that happened. What do we need to do now to fix it? Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Um, now, being that you was like a two-year driver coming in from Snyder, uh, was the amount of what you was getting at Snyder, is it a little bit more now while you had variant or you, or you had to take a pay cut to do what you wanted to do? No. Um, actually, with Snyder, for me to go from regional dedicated to go over the road, because that was the original plan was just to stay with Snyder. Mm -hmm. And, um, but to do the transfer in divisions, I was actually going to take a pay cut um, in the same company. And then this one actually paid uh, quite a bit more uh, than what I was making with Schneider. Okay. Okay. So variant. Um there's a lot of there's a lot of discussions on how you guys receive your uh your dispatches and everything uh with this particular company you guys don't have a dispatcher per se right correct so everything is pretty much automated um what was said before that you know the planners and the and and the and the fleet managers they input the the stuff into the in, I, I guess it's the IE that you guys call it. I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure what exactly that you guys call it, but um, it's a it's 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 an IE or something like that. But they input the um, the uh, information into the system. And you guys, do you guys choose? Like, let's say once once it pops up and say, hey, uh, load such and such, such and such. Do you guys get to choose where y'all go or you or, or do y'all don't have no choice but to accept the, the load that they that they sending you? It is for dispatch. And for the most part, we do not have a choice. However. Uh, if it is going to one of the five boroughs in New York, then we can refuse one of those. Oh, okay, yeah, we we, we no, we we not doing the boroughs, baby. <laughs> 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 we we not doing that. But I tell you what, they they love. Do let me ask you this because this is now this is U.S. Express. They love keeping me in the Northeast, man. I mean, I I freaking can't stand it. That T.S. right there in uh, Maryland. Uh, forgot the damn. What was that? It starts with an H. I, I don't know. Huntsville, Hokin, Hokin Polk, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, they they love keeping me up over there, man. Do do variant keep you guys up in the Northeast also? Oh no, I have been with the company for a month now. In four weeks, I have driven twenty nine states. I have driven. Oh, about 
over 14,500 miles. I have been as high as um, upstate New York, as low as Florida, and I've been to California. <laughs> okay, okay. But you, you know, from the pictures that I've seen, and shout out to the She Trucking Trucking group, by the way. From the pictures that I've seen, you you had a ball. I mean, you it look like you having a ball out oh, there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Um, I choose to run hard and do six, 700 miles a day. Mm-hmm. Um, that way I am forced to take a 34 reset. And then when I do my reset, whatever area I happen to be in, I will explore the area. I've got to go to the Grand Canyon. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got to eat my first Reuben sandwich in New York, upstate New York. Okay. I've, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm having a call. All That's right. what it's about for me. Tell, tell us how, tell us how you doing that. You, you would, would, what do you? What do you do? You you try to find the, the, the closest truck stop and then take an Uber over? Um, yeah. So if, when I notice that I got probably, usually when I get down to about 18, 20 hours on my clock, mm-hmm. I know the next day that's going to be my last run before I have to do a reset. Right. And then I just kind of do a little... Trip planning, see where I might end up and where I might want to try to end up at. And Sound then, like something that I do. Um, yeah, so I try to find a truck stop that's close to a, a car rental place, mm-hmm. or if not, then I'll use the Uber and um, just try to explore. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. So being with Variant for the last uh for the for the last little bit, you you really been enjoying yourself. Now you said that you you say you doing this because you want to uh you want to venture into being an owner operator, right? Right. So with me, all I knew before I got into over the road was just the the Costco dedicated and I was like, you know, I really enjoy driving, but well, I enjoy the real world instead of dedicated, and that's why I did this: is to branch over before I fork down that much money, and then end up hating it. So I wanted to give this a trial run first. All right. So now that you're driving for Variant, and you want to you 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 are exploring the the over the road aspect of it, which I think you're doing a very good job of. The next part of it is: are are you are you thinking of going lease so that you can so that you can get your fo- your feet wet more, or are you feeling or are you feeling just jumping it jumping right in, uh, just jumping right into it? Oh, I'll just jump right into it. Um, I'm looking at probably about six months with variant. Mm-hmm. And then um, I should have, especially the way my this past month, um, I should have enough to uh, purchase a truck and um, just go in it. And while I'm driving with Barry for six months, I'll be doing a little bit more research on the process and everything of actually doing uh, owner op. All right. That's what's up. That is what's up. Melina, again, I am having a ball, having a good time with you, getting to know you and and getting to see uh, everything that uh, that that you're about. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity uh, to get uh, to get to know you. I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it. Me, class kids, it went pop. Def to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales, it won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart, the bars, you got bops. Merch, red, and Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom, me, but go off. Or make a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rump, bump, bump. Y'all fit to me like this symphony. Your career's done, done, done.